Hello everyone! In this video I'll show you how to make the best polar alignment possible with the Dwarf 3 Smart Telescope by using the new EQ mode feature. And I'll show you step by step how to make a fast alignment and also how to fine tune it using the telephoto lens. If you don't have yet a Dwarf 3 Smart Telescope but you do have a Dwarf 2, this tutorial should be available also for the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope since it has also the EQ mode feature available. If you are new to astronomy and astrophotography, polar alignment will help you align the telescope axis to one of the celestial poles. So the telescope will be able to follow the stars moving in the night sky and keep them still. This is needed to be able to take long exposures and have a good star tracking. And if you are in northern hemisphere, you need to align the telescope to the North Celestial Pole at the North Star Polaris. Also, the EQ mode feature will allow you to align the Dwarf 3 Smart Telescope even if you do not see Polaris, even if you, if you have obstructions or you live in an apartment and you don't have any views available in the North. Now let's uh, see the EQ mode feature. We connect it to the Dwarf 3. We went Astro mode pressed on photo, select it astro, and then we'll uh, select function, then select EQ mode. Here we'll pre uh, press confirm. And if you haven't focused, you need also to focus the telescope before you will continue. And now it says to get ready, have a door three, a stable tripod and a compass tool. You can use here also a compass app tool if you don't know where is Polaris and to uh, help you point a tripod towards north or a Polar Finder app like Polar Finder or Polar Aligner Pro that has also a daytime alignment feature that can help you do this also in daytime. Then we click next. Here it can be confusing this next step. It says you are currently in Northern Hemisphere. Mount the device on a level tripod with its back facing north and then cylinder facing logo. I think here could have been better explained. Basically, you need to align the tripod towards north. However, the door 3 Smart Telescope, you'll have to point it with the back part of the body towards north and with the uh, optical tube and logo facing south. We'll place the door 3 on the tripod that is level. After we can proceed to the next step, we'll press next tilt the device towards the north until the angle it makes with the horizontal is the same as your current latitude, minus 47 degrees. So basically I need to tilt the telescope 47 degrees. Before we'll tilt the door 3 towards north, we have two options. One, to leave the optical tube as it is here without uh, changing the position and having the logo and the lenses facing south and then click next. Doing so, you'll make a fast alignment, but you won't be able to fine tune it with the telephoto lens. I think the application can get you confused, especially if you're doing this at the first time. So if you're watching this video, I think it will help you. It doesn't say where is north, south, and it's very easy to get confused. I think north and south should be placed there in the app, so that you'll know which one is basically the back of the tripod north and the face south. So we are tilted like this and it will show us how much we need to make corrections in altitude, how many degrees and also left, right in azimuth. If you see Polaris and is visible from your location and you don't have obstructions, we can go directly and use the second method by rotating the optical tube towards zenith directly up like this. Now having the optical tube pointing towards Zenith and now being tilted, it will point directly to Polaris. And we'll uh, use the smartphone, also the tripod, to make some adjustments until we have Polaris visible in the field of view of the telephoto lens. Once we'll have it there, I'll show the position that helped me to get the perfect alignment of one degree error that is currently in uh, the first version of the app the best alignment possible. Polaris here on my screen, you can see it. He is on the third part of the image. 
from left to right and this was the position they gave me one degree if i move more close to the margins of the frame will be about uh, two degrees also about center two degrees could be from one degrees to five degrees so usually if you can see polaris in the telephoto view you are close if you are placing polaris like i did close to one third then it should give you about one to three degrees uh, error depending if it's closer to center or more to the margins in the center i believe i had around four to five degrees and when i went more to the right part of the image the error got smaller from uh, two to one degree error and you'll get even better results with long exposure astrophotography we can proceed to the next step perfect alignment achieved deviation is at one degree you may proceed with your shooting now let me show you the results that i got after making the polar alignment i've tested it on a few targets and i wanted to show you first the helix nebula when i used 60 seconds exposures and i made a plan of two hours we are now at the pc and i do want to show you some of the images single uh, captures of 60 seconds each then we'll move on also on the live stacks we zoomed in and we can see here round stars they look perfect and let's check also more images and let's see more images look round stars also round almost all the images here are with round stars i might have some with small tails maybe because of wind like this here we had some tails if we go 60 seconds in some images we could have tails especially if we have wind and it does not have to do with uh, how good it tracks or how good is the polar alignment we saw more single images here and looked at the stars now let's see also the live stacks so we have here the live stacks and i've imported it in adobe photoshop and look here we have a live stack of two hours with the helix nebula now we'll zoom in let's go to 100 percent and see the stars round sharp is not much to do to correct them even using blur exterminator and let me show how the image looks processed and also using blur exterminator so here it is two hours with the helix nebula processed very low also in the sky i was really impressed with the result and having now this eq mode feature and if you'll use also my tutorial to fine tune the alignment you can get round stars like this and better looking images so here is the only image i've processed all the images are live stacks directly from the dwarf 3. here we have north america nebula ngc 7000 let's zoom in here i had an error i believe from uh, three degrees or five degrees and i had a little bit of tears if we zoom like this uh, 200 percent or 100 percent however not much here we have also a live stack of 60 seconds images we notice here a little bit of um, trails a little bit of elongation however i did had larger error i believe uh, five degrees here was before fine-tuning the alignment now let's continue and here we have a live stack with uh, 60 seconds exposures of the cave nebula and let's zoom in again 100 percent and let's see the the stars look up to the corner you see round stars we have a small elongation here but very small not as good as on the helix nebula tracking might differ depending also on the region you are imaging in the, in the night sky and that is why having this option to fine tune the alignment i think is important unfortunately it's not available at the moment from dwarf lab however using the live view and the telephoto lens will help you to do that to get an alignment up to one degree error now let's see also the next image here we have the rose nebula 45 seconds exposures this is a screenshot from the phone with my last test on the horse nebula and also my first plan of one hour integration let's zoom in also here and check the stars look 
round stars, round sharp stars. The image is not processed, it's just a screenshot, one hour live stack. Look at the stars. I was really impressed with the results. I believe this is an amazing feature. And if you also fine tune it using the telephoto lens, you'll be able to get more uh, accurate alignment and very good results in equatorial mode. You'll be able to get round stars at 60 seconds. This is the live stack with the host nebula. We can see here the stars around looking nice. We don't have a halo, so regarding filters, we have very good filters with the door three. Once we get a more data, we can see here the image does become brighter and better quality with less noise. And here is the position of Polaris when I've imaged. And I do want to show you a comparison with Altazimut mode, because in Altazimut, you'll have longer trails at 60 seconds. I made a few tests. This is one of them that I'll show you in a few moments. North America Nebula. We can compare it with Pelica Nebula that I've just imaged with 60 seconds exposures. We can see a larger difference in trails, even if, if I had a five degree error when imaging the North America Nebula, we can see that the trails are longer in Altazimut mode. And if we compare the results when I've uh, got one or two degrees error, like one degree for Helix Nebula, two degrees for the Horset Nebula. So these were my results. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think a fine tuning option would be nice to have with the new EQ mode feature. I believe now the door three will be able to give you very good results with long exposures, good looking stars, if you'll uh, get a good polar alignment. If not, you will have probably some small tears, but I still notice that the performance is good. Even in Altazimut mode, the images won't look too bad, even with some small tears. However, if you want to get round stars like I got in the images, I suggest to get the best polar alignment possible and hope this tutorial will help you do that. I've tested uh, this app early on, just after a week that have been uh, released. I had a week of clouds <laughs> and uh, I still believe there are room for improvements, especially in the app to have a north and south sign there to help you uh, when you need to tilt the telescope. It can get confusing, especially at night. Hopefully, if you see this video in the future, those uh, markings north and south will be available on the app. I will uh, also mention DorfLab about this. I believe DorfLab can improve this feature and let you go with even better polar alignment than the one degree if you want to get really, really accurate. And if you are also interested in getting the Dor3, I have affiliate links in the video description. Well, I hope all these tips and tricks that I've showed in this video will help you get a faster alignment, no confusion, and it will help you get a fast and accurate polar alignment with a Dorsey Smart Telescope. Hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and I want to give big thanks to all the channel members. You make a big difference. And also don't forget to check the data that I made available with the Dorsey Smart Telescope. It's available also from uh, level one. And if you want also to support the channel and get access to master photography data, including the DOS 3, you can also hit that join button. Well, I hope the video helped you and I'll see you soon in the next one. Clear sky, everyone.